a morning briefing would be something facilitated by the plan section chief where he goes around from section to section asking them to give briefings uh, specific to what they're working on so that you get a comprehensive picture of what's going on on that particular incident. An operational briefing is something that I perceive as a briefing given by uh, a division supervisor, a strike team leader, or a crew boss to the people who are actually going to be carrying out the operations for that day. And that briefing needs to get into more specifics. And it's kind of a trickle-down thing, you know. And so a uh, division soup gives his briefing to the crew bosses. The crew bosses give their briefing to the crews, which is why these briefings need to be as accurate as possible. I think a tactical briefing, it's something that changes constantly because you're in such a dynamic environment. And if you look at the risk management cycle, there's no other way for you to do it but to reevaluate continuously. And if you reevaluate and, and a tactical briefing is unnecessary, at the end of your uh, cycle, your, when you reach a decision point, you might not have to change anything, but you may have to reevaluate and get back together with your crews and give them new instructions. And your new instructions might require uh, more or less comprehensive briefing, briefing. In other words, conditions may change. Weather conditions may change. You may need to address that. Um, fire behavior may change. You're going to have to address that. Um, resource resources on the incident may change, you need to address that. I think the tactical briefings come at those points when there's a change in the situation. I think that the briefing checklist in the IRPG is an essential tool because um, there are two kinds of briefings that I've seen historically. There's the briefing with too much information and there's the briefing with not enough information. And what I'm looking for is useful information. And it's hard for me to determine what that useful information is off the cuff. So by referring to this, I sort of develop a framework to work that fire from. And so I take this briefing checklist and I go through it carefully and I come to areas such as, um, such as communications. And then I pull out my oats book and I make sure that I have gotten accurate information I write it down and I make sure that when I come to that part in the briefing checklist, when I'm giving the briefing, that I'm able to give those guys the most accurate information I can. So as I go through the checklist, I come to communications, I refer to my OATS book and I say, air to ground frequency will be 168650. And as I'm giving it, I'm looking out into, into the faces of the people that I'm talking to and I expect to see them writing that information down in their OATS books. And I'm also hoping that we have an attitude of we're in this together and they're following along with me in this OATS book. And it's kind of a checks and balances thing so that, so that they are sure that I'm giving everything that they need to work with. So this is a giant time saver because I know that everybody's anxious to engage and they're anxious to give the briefing and get everybody going. But it seems like if you do that too quickly without actually checking the information that you're giving to people, then you're going to miss something and you're going to spend that time you thought you were gaining chasing that information down again and getting it back out to your people. And so you interrupt the operational tempo by doing that. And so to me, that's, that's the crux of giving a good briefing, making sure they've got the critical information they need or the useful information they need to be operational.